Hey, welcome to your podcast. Aha. Um, we're going to be talking about moon phases today and some other things that the moon is capable of doing for us. So let's get started real quick. We'll try to make this as painless as possible. So first off, we'll start out with the moon. Okay, so what is the moon? Okay, the moon is basically considered a satellite. And why? Satellites are things that revolve around planets. Okay, they go in orbits. Um, so our moon is orbiting or going around um, our Earth. Okay, so it's stuck in our orbit, it's stuck in our gravitational pull. So therefore, it is considered a satellite. When we say satellite, a lot of times you guys think those electronic things that float around the planet, but that's not always the case. All right, some other things here. Let's slide out our tab. Okay, why can you see it? All right, the moon is not lit up, okay? It does not glow um, from its own energy or anything like that. Simply, the moon is just reflecting the sun's rays onto it. And sometimes, depending on where the sun is situated, earth situated, and we are situated, sometimes the moon might look full like in this picture. Sometimes it might look like a crescent. It all completely depends on what is going on. All right, some other things with the moon. Move me out of the way here. All right, so phases, okay, waxing and waning. All right, so waxing, the moon is starting to fill in. When it's waning, it's starting to disappear. Um, they're tough. A lot of you guys will confuse these things. Try to just think of um, waning as fading. They kind of sound similar. Um, it's the best thing I can try to tell you for that. But So you'll notice sometimes the moon actually looks like it's filling in, and sometimes as it starts to disappear, it goes in the other direction. All right, which is going to bring us up to our next things, which will be moon phases. And yes, this one is in Espanol. Okay, so a lot of times you'll notice it's, all right, right here you see it's waxing. So it's coming in until eventually you get into your full moon phase. Now, really, in actuality, at any given time, the moon is always half lit up. All right, it's only half lit up. The other side is the dark side of the moon. And that's not the Pink Floyd album either. All right, so half of it is lit up at any given time. And moon cycles, so again, you see this right here. So if you take a look at the diagram, it's a great example of why um, you only see things. Really? Really? That's, you gotta love it. Good old Bill. All right, so uh, some things you'll actually notice. So here's Earth, okay? So let's say that you are over here and the sun is over here. All right, the sun's in the back side of the moon. All right, so what you're going to see is the dark side. All right, so to you, it doesn't look like it's lit up. If you go to the other side, though, if in its orbit later in the month, the moon is over here, okay, the sun is actually hitting the other side, which you see, so it looks like it's a full moon. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in class. Um, the moon, though, if you look at this inner circle, that's what the moon always actually looks like. It's always half lit up. But depending on where you are, it'll actually look like that to us on Earth. And, in a very mature note, your science teacher just mooned you. Sorry, every podcast has at least one cheesy joke in it. All right, some other things that are caused by the moon. Skipping through here, okay. Um, ah, there we go. Okay, so... Um, First off, tides, huge. Now, not as big in our area because we don't have oceans really in our direct area, so we don't pay attention to it. But if you go down to the beach at all, whether it be down towards New York City or New Hampshire or New Jersey, um, you get tides, so high and low tides. So what causes that? Believe it or not, even though our gravitation keeps the moon trapped, um, the moon's gravitational pull pulls on our planet too. So what we get from that are our tides. So when the moon pulls on them, we can get our high tides, we can also get our low tides. It can actually be strong enough to move the water around on the planet. It's not strong enough to move the planet. So we have a quick little diagram here. I'll move this up. You've got, let's just say here's the sun, and then here's your new moon or your full moon. When the sun is in line with the moon, they form a nice little gravitational line. And you can see they really pull on the water. So you get some higher high tides here. If the sun, Earth, and the moon form a right angle, Okay, the sun is pulling this direction, the moon is pulling this direction, the tides aren't quite as bad, okay? They're definitely not nearly as high or nearly as low in that situation. And we have a name for those. Um, we call them our, our neat tides or spring tides. Now, the other thing that can get caused by the moon. So, you mix the moon, the earth, and the sun all back together again, and you get a solar eclipse. And this is when the sun is blocked by the moon. 
So if you look at this diagram, you have the sun, the moon, and the earth. Now when the moon eclipses the earth, all right, and so the moon is getting is blocking the sun's rays from hitting us. It only actually is a little tiny area of earth. It doesn't mean the entire planet earth goes black. Okay, the moon is not nearly big enough. If the entire planet earth goes black, we're all about to die because something really big just got in the way and it's not good. So if you look at one, you go blind. But if you could look at one, you get this. You can you use a special lens? You can actually stare at it. The reason why you can still go blind even though the sun's being blocked all of the external rays around the sun are still coming through, so UV damage is still going to reach your little eyeball and make it go blind. And last but not least, the much more fun one to look at, because you can look at it, is a lunar eclipse. And this is when the Earth blocks the sun's light from the moon. Now again, the sun's pretty big, and the Earth is not going to be able to fully eclipse the moon. So a little bit of light bouncing around out there in the universe gets around, and lights up the moon and gets this nice, really cool color to it, okay? So a lunar eclipse is where the moon is being eclipsed, all right, or blocked. So the moon's being blocked by the Earth. And your other eclipse, going back to solar, okay, solar eclipse, the sun's rays are getting blocked by the moon, all right? Solar, sun, lunar, moon. All right, that's it. See that? I'm good. I'm done. Uh, hopefully it wasn't too painful. 6.30. All right, so this is a bit longer, but you survived. All right, have a good night.